Before we get to the turning the LED on and off, I want to go back and mention something about the mode register. And this comes from a comment from Frederick Berquist, noting that the register has to have a zero and a one in it, but we're not really ensuring that there is a zero in the first bit place. And we want to make sure we do that because somewhere else, maybe in a program, we may have set the register to say an analog mode or an alternate function mode where it has a one at that first position where we need it to have a zero in that position. So to ensure that we have a zero there, we have to do an and and a not on the first bit. Let's take a look at the, the defined values that they give us. I'm gonna to go to the declaration of this and you can see that there are three that was explained last time. We have one with without a zero and a one, and that's three, which is a one, one. We have a zero, which is a one, which is just a, uh, a zero and a one. And we have a one, which is at the, at this place is a two, which is a one and a zero. So let's go ahead and note that in our program, just so we have it on hand, just in case we need it. I'm just gonna use this as a, as a reference. So we know that this is a a one one because it's a three. It's a hex number three. This is a zero one, and that's the one we, that we used for the mode. And this is a one one. I'm sorry, it's a one zero. If we do an and not with this number here, then it'll turn this position to a zero, ensuring that that position is a zero. So let's go ahead and duplicate this. We're going to take this to the Change this to a one, and we're gonna do an and not. Let's take a look at the other ones to see if we need it. Uh, this is only a single um, bit. Let's, let's confirm that just to make sure. Yeah, the type is only a single bit, so we don't have to worry about that one. We've set that what we, uh, how we need it to be, and that's gonna be a zero. The speed, on the other hand, is a 32-bit number, so there are gonna be two bits per pin and you can see that it's, it's at the one one, so we don't have to make sure anything is at a zero. Let's take a look at the pull up, pull down, and that's also a one one, so we don't have to worry about that one either. Now let's talk about turning the LED on and off. Let's turn on the LED using the BSS, or the BSRR register, the bit set and reset register. We're gonna use the same GPIOC structure, and the BSRR should be a member of that. Yeah, you can see that there's a BRR and, there B, and there's a BSRR. We're going to use the BSRR first. And to turn it on, we're just going to have it... Well, we can do the, the OR bitwise operation. And we're just going to take a look at the reference manual and see where port C is located. You can see that the set register is here for the pin 6 and the reset register is at pin, or is at number 22. So it's bit number six is for setting, so we're gonna use that. We have a few ways of doing this. We can actually just type in GPIO, just like we did before, the GPIO here. And then because we're using BSRR, you know, you, generally you'd use the, the member from the GPIOC as the next statement, or the next word after the underscore. So we'll try the BSRR here. And we can see that. So we would go to the number six. And there, and you'll see that you have a bit reset and then you have a bit set. And you can go to the bit set number six. You could also do things like when we look at the, the bit set and reset register, we could do the shift six positions to the left. One shifting it left six positions. But we don't really need to do that because it's already stated for us. You can also use the bit or the actual hex, which is actually stated for you. It's, it's hex number 40. So now we're going to turn off the LED. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to use the BRR, the bit reset register. And we're going to use the or bitwise operation. And then we'll use the bit reset register, which you sh we should only have the we have the bit reset. You should only have a bit reset, not a bit set for those. You can see that the BRR only has the bit reset. So we'll go ahead and use that, which is number six. And now we need to create the delays. So let's go ahead and 
the weights that we need to put in. We're gonna have a delay. So I'll call that, uh, we'll do the, we'll make the uh, function first. We're not gonna return anything, so this could be a void. And the name will be, wait for a, wait for a moment. And then we can have an integer for the time frame. We'll call that the moment. Create our co code block symbols. We're gonna need two integers here. We're gonna use a for loop. Actually, we'll just start writing the for loop. We're gonna have to have a time delay and it'll be a for loop that is just gonna loop several times to just make the microcontroller do something. It could be anything, but it's, in this case, it's just gonna do a for loop to, to make the microcontroller have sort of an empty process. And you can see that it gave us a way to do code complete. So we can click on this one or we can click on that one. And in this one, we're actually initializing the variable within the loop, and here we're not. And I'm going to do this one because I want to initialize the variables beforehand. And we're going to call this variable i. And the max will be the moment. And to make the microcontroller do something, I'm just going to use maybe a j here as another variable. So just increasing the j. So I'm going to do the integers of i and j. And just so these variables don't get optimized out, I'm going to I'm going to make them volatile integers. So the for loop is iterating and is increasing i every time it goes through the loop, and as long as i is less than the moment, the the variable that we pass in, it'll keep doing it. If the i is not less than the moment, then it'll escape the for loop and then it'll allow the program to go to the next instruction. So let's go ahead and add it here. Wait for a moment, it gives us the code complete for that. And then the moment it is asking for, we'll make that, it's probably gonna have to be a pretty big number. So I'll go with 20, 200,000. So I'll do the same thing down here. So we are turning on an LED, we're waiting for a moment, 200,000 of them and then we're turning off the LED and we're waiting for a moment again. And then the whole process will start all over again because of the while loop. This is a never ending loop. So we'll keep doing this process over and over again, turning the LED on, waiting, turning the LED off, waiting. Now we're ready to compile or build this program. So let's go ahead and click on the build. Okay, we're getting the same error that we had a few videos ago where we're describing the IDE. So let's go ahead and fix that. A shortcut for getting this file where you need it to be is just going up to the file, going open file, and this gives you the, the file explorer. So we don't need to open up our own file explorer to do this. So we're just gonna go into components, Kuhox master, the boot, and we found it under the test. So I'm just gonna click on it and use control X or cut. Actually, I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to go back to the boot, go to source, and put it right into the source. So paste there. So we're just going to cancel this because we've done that process. And let's try building it again. Okay, we don't have that same error, but we have a different error. So let's see what that is. Okay, this error is talking about a warning that a variable is set but not used. I'm not going to worry about that because it's just a warning, and if I do have any problems getting my my controller to work, I'll go ahead and investigate this. Plug in the ST link. We can flash the microcontroller. Okay, we've just programmed the microcontroller, and you can see that the LED is blinking. This is when it's on and off. That's the 200,000 iterations for the for loop. That's how long it would take. Let's go ahead and change that and make it a one of them a lesser value. Let's say when it's turned off, we'll have it going at a lesser value. So it should be on longer than it is off or it should be off shorter than it is on. Okay, let's go to the where it turns it off and we'll just half this, make it 100,000. 100, so let's go ahead and build it first and we can flash the microcontroller. 
Okay, the microcontroller has the program downloaded to it. It's flashed. And you can see that it is on longer than it is off. We were able to successfully modify the program and show this modification. There are a couple of gotchas that I want to point out before I end this video. And you may have some issues flashing the program to the microcontroller. And I want to show you what a couple things that you can do and what I've done to alleviate this. The first one is where you have where we had the resistors from the SWCLK and the SWDIO. I removed those and where they connected to the plus and minus rail. I had to do this uh, when, when I actually had Windows 7, but when I upgraded it, it didn't seem to work anymore, but it could have been a whole host of other issues. But I understand that these are actually pulled up internally, so pulled up and pulled down. This one is pulled down and this one is pulled up internally, so we really don't need those resistors there. The other thing is you can put a 510 ohm resistor and to going to ground on the boot zero pin. And that boot zero pin is pin number 60. The other thing that I did was I took the ground and positive, the ground being the red here and then the positive being the, the brown from the ST-Link interface. I took that as close to the PCB as possible because when you're working with breadboards, breadboards can have a lot of interference and can cause some some issues when it comes to noise that, com that can be coming from all kinds of sources. So what I did is I just put these as close to the, the controller as possible and I didn't have any problems after I did that. So those three things you might want to look into as you're flashing the microcontroller to hopefully pacify any issues that may occur. Another circumstance that you may have gotten into is where you've actually bricked the, the microcontroller, where maybe you've had an error in the program or you've, you've actually caused the program to do something unintended to the microcontroller. You may have bricked it. You can also pull the boot zero, which is pin 60, high. And you can, you can use a, a 10K resistor to do this. And all you're gonna do is pull it high using the 10K going to the positive rail. While the pin is pulled high, you would do a full chip erase or full memory erase. You'd use a program called the STM32 ST-Link Utility. You can find the ST-Link Utility just by searching for it. And it should be the first link. And do, your, do the download and installation. It's very straightforward. You can also use this program to program the microcontroller by just loading the file, opening the file, and selecting it from the, the debug in the binary file. So just double click that and you'll have the file loaded up in this program. It'll also show you the device memory when you have it connected. So you can click on the connect to target and you'll see that it'll show you what's, the, what's on the actual microcontroller at all the memory addresses. And you need to click on this icon to program it. The settings can be changed using this icon and you can see that it has the firmware version. It has the target information, which is the actual microcontroller. And the mode should be in normal and SWD, which is the, the SW uh, CLK and SWDIO pins that are being used with this ST link. And I have mine set at 1.8 megahertz. And to do a full chip erase, you can use this, this icon here. So I hope you enjoyed the first part of the series blinking an LED on and off, programming the microcontroller, and how to set the registers for the GPIO. Thank you for watching.